The object of today's lesson is to be able to identify congruent segments and congruent angles in congruent triangles. Those parts are called corresponding parts. Corresponding parts are not parts that are necessarily in the same location. They are they have the same relative position. So they may not both be on the upper left hand corner or the upper right hand corner, but they have, um, they're matching. They're between the same two congruent sides. They're between the same two congruent angles. So you may hear it um, as talk about corresponding parts and it just means the, the parts that go together. <clears throat> so the theorem that we're gonna talk about today is actually called CPCTC. Um, that stands for corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. What it means is that if you have the parts of a triangle that are congruent, then the triangles are gonna be congruent and vice versa. If the triangles are congruent, we're gonna start with this one. If two figures are congruent, then all of the parts, their corresponding parts of one figure are congruent to the corresponding parts of the other figure. Okay, so we have this picture. So one of the ways that we can tell you that things are congruent is we can mark it in the picture. It can be given to you. So our corresponding angles would be angle K is congruent to angle S because they are marked the same with one mark on them. Um, angle L is congruent to angle R because they have two marks and two marks. And then angle J is congruent to angle T. So we've got this one and this one. Okay, now we also have our corresponding sides. So we have um, KL, which is marked with one, right? Here's KL, it's marked with one mark, is congruent to ST. Parts are congruent to parts, okay? And then we have, um, oh, sorry, that was not KL, that's KJ. Sorry about that. KJ is congruent to ST. Um, KL, which is two marks, is segment KL is congruent to segment SR. And segment JL is congruent to segment TR. We want to match up our pieces um, so that they go. So J matches up with T, they're marked the same. L matches up with R. And so you want to, it doesn't matter what order you write them in, but you want to write them in a matching order so that your corresponding pieces go together. So now we can write a congruent statement that will summarize all of that for us. It looks like this, triangle JKL, the order of that doesn't matter. I just randomly picked a way to write that. It doesn't matter. But what does matter is the second part. When I write that second triangle, they have to match. So we know that J matches up with T. We know that K matches up with S. And we know that L matches up with R or corresponds to R. And so our triangle congruent statement would be that triangle JKL is congruent to triangle TSR. And that is a good summary of all of the pieces all together because you have these matching. So you have T and J are corresponding parts, and then you also have J, K is congruent to T, S. <clears throat> so you can kind of see how that works. So let's put this into practice. Take a second, pause it, and take a look at these two um, problems and try them on your own. Now, hopefully you just did one and two on your own. So let's talk through them. Based on this statement right here, let's just start guess, Let's start working our way through our problems. It says AB is congruent to XY. If we check that, AB is congruent to XY, so that's good. And then C is congruent to Y. Here is C, and it's congruent to Z. So that is wrong, so I'd like to mark it out. It's a good uh, test-taking strategy. Mark out the part that's wrong. A, B is congruent to Y, Z. Well, we already know that's not true. It's congruent to X, Y, so we can be finished with that. B, C is congruent to X, Y. That's not true. A, B is congruent to X, Y. 
which leaves BC is congruent to YZ, so BC is congruent to YZ, and A is congruent to X. That is true, so you should have number four on that one. Then, if triangle JKL is congruent to triangle MNO, which statement is always true? K, L, J, so if we go in order, we did K to L to J, in order to match that up, it should say, the statement should say N-O-M, which it doesn't, it says N-M-O, so it should say N-O-M. K-J-L, K-J-L should match up with N-M-O, angle N-M-O, which it doesn't, okay? It should be N-M-O would be proper. J-L is equal to M-O, J-L, is equal to MO, that is true, so we keep it. And just so we can look at it, JK is congruent to ON, and it's not, that should be N, uh, MN. Okay, and so that's what's wrong with that. So you should have those two pieces, good practice with using congruency statements. Now, I can tell you in the picture with markings that the things are congruent, or I can give you a congruent statement. If you ever have a congruent statement, you need to pay attention to it because it's hard to tell sometimes if the figure has been translated or rotated or um, flipped over, reflected. You never can tell. And so <clears throat> let's look at how these match up. These first four statements, notice that they are congruency statements. Parts are congruent. Okay, parts are congruent, and then the measures, right, M, this is the measure of, and this is the length of KL. When it says equal, I want measures, okay, then we have equal measures. And so anytime you have congruent, what I'm asking for is what part? So your answer is going to be a letter. When I have equals, it's going to be a number answer. I want to know what is the measure of it. So angle N is equal to, or excuse me, angle N is congruent to. You do not want to use this picture. One, because there's a standard uh, rectangles uh, to represent these drawings, but these are not actual rectangles because that's 88 and 92. So we just drew a generic picture to represent it. There is no reason necessarily that um, N is going to match up with S. And for any particular reason, this is lower left, lower left. Okay, we can't go by that. You gotta go by the statement if you have a statement. Now, it does just so happen that N is congruent to S. You wanna use your congruency statement, not the picture. Never use the picture if you have a statement. Angle R is congruent to angle M. They are in the same location. Segment KL is congruent to segment PQ. And segment LM is congruent to segment QR. Anytime it says congruence, the parts are congruent, so you're gonna give a part name. Now, E is the measure of angle P. So we need to see P matches up with angle K. It is corresponding to angle K. So that means if K is 88, then P is also 88 degrees. Then angle L. Angle L matches up with angle Q or corresponds to angle Q. So we don't know angle L, but we do know that angle Q is 92. Again, be careful. It's not always going to be to where everything matches up the way that it's laid out. Sometimes it'll be flipped over. Then it says KL. How long is KL? Because this is equal. So how long is KL? Well, KL is 2x plus 5, but I need a numerical answer. Well, KL matches up with PQ. That means that KL is also 22 because PQ is 22. So the length of KL is 22. The length of LM, LM matches up with QR. So these are both 18. So LM is a length of 18. And then the value of x, so I want to know how big does x have to be so that kl can be 22. So we set up our equation. I want to know 2x plus 5 is equal to 22. So 2x, subtract 5 from both sides, you get 2x is equal to 17, or x is equal to 17 over 2, or 8.5. 17 over 2, or 8.5. Five. Both of those answers are good answers. Okay, 
So congruency, you don't have to set up proportions or anything. That's like in similarity. If you're thinking about that, don't get confused. The parts are equal to each other, so you set them equal to each other. Okay, <clears throat> let's look at another one. In fact, try this one on your own. Pause the video and try this one on your own. Hopefully you try number three. So um, the first one, first it's important, notice this um, right here, QRST is congruent to WXYZ. So that means QR, here's QR, QR is equal to WX, so I'm going to mark them the same. Um, RS is equal to XY, ST is equal to YZ, and um, QT is equal to ZW. So we go through and mark all of those. Then you also want to mark your angles that are equal to each other. Uh, we have Q is equal to W. We have R is equal to X. We have S is equal to Y. And we have Z is equal to t. Okay, now we have all of our pieces labeled so that it's easy to see on the picture and I want to find the value of x. So this is the variable x, not the point x. This is the variable x. So we have this angle right here. So w is the angle. It is 5x plus 5 degrees. That is an angle measurement. So we need to know the angle that matches up with, that corresponds to angle W. Angle W corresponds to angle Q. So angle W is congruent to angle Q. That means that 5x plus 5 is equal to 65. So you start your inverse operations, subtract 5 from both sides, and you get 5x is equal to 60. Inverse that, divide by 5 and divide by 5, and you get that x is equal to 12. I asked for the value of x, I have the value of x, and so I can stop there. Then the second question says to find the value of y. So I look through my problems and I find the y variable. Here's my y variable, y minus x. Well, y minus x represents a side. It's this side wx. Well, wx, so y minus x, this is different. The, the, this x and y are the points. This x and y are the variables. These are capital letters. These are lowercase. So the side, y minus x, we know wx is congruent to, wx is congruent to qr. So wx, y minus x, is equal to qr, which is 6. Now, we have two variables, but remember in this previous problem right here, we found out that x was 12. So we are going to substitute that 12 in for x, because once we found it, it applies to the whole problem. We don't have to start over. Now, inverse, add 12 to both sides, and you get that y is equal to 18. And that's all I asked for on that question, so you can stop. Okay. So we can tell you that things are congruent because they are marked. I can tell you that they're congruent in a statement. Now there's other ways that we can know things are congruent. We'll get some practice with that on these next couple problems. So on all of those, we said if two figures are congruent, then all the parts are congruent to the corresponding parts of the other figure. Now the converse of that says if all parts of the figure are congruent to the corresponding parts of the other figure, then the two figures are congruent. Again, this is a part of CPCTC. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. We're going to come full circle back to CPCTC when we get to the end of this entire unit. So let's see. So right now we need to know if all of the pieces are congruent, then the triangles are congruent. That's what we're going for. So let's look at each piece and let's look at all of our sides. Let's start with our sides. So AB is marked right here. AB is congruent to ED. AB is congruent to ED because it's marked that way. AB is congruent to ED. Now we also know that the segment BC is congruent to segment DC. We know that because the definition of congruent is that they have equal measures. Since they have equal measures, it means that the parts are congruent. Same thing here, because these have equal measure, it means that those parts are congruent, so AC is congruent to EC. 
So we have our three sides are congruent to our three sides. Now we need to look at our angles. It is marked that angle A is congruent to angle E. Those are marked right here. It is marked that angle B is congruent to angle D. So angle B is congruent to angle D. Now we have run out of markings, but go back to the things that we already know, and this is something that you always want to look for, is don't forget about vertical angles. You're going to need those vertical angles. Make a note over here. Okay, those are important. I also know that angle BCA, we have to use its full name to talk about that angle right there. BCA is congruent to angle <coughs> DCE, this other side, DCE, because they are vertical angles. That's why they are congruent. All the rest of them we knew because they were marked in the picture. This one is the only one that we have to know. It's, it's understood. It's like I'm telling you without telling you. Now, since all six pieces, so since all three side pairs and all three angle pairs are equal, then yes, the triangles are congruent to each other. Right? That's what it says. If corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So we've got our corresponding parts. They're congruent, which means our triangles are congruent. Okay. Now, with this one, it's going to take some um, knowledge of our vocabulary. We need to use our vocabulary. It says E is the midpoint of AC. Let's stop right there and just deal with that. So let's go find E. E is a point. E is the midpoint of AC. AC is this whole segment. So if E is in the middle, what that tells me is that AE equals or is congruent to EC. So I know that AE, segment AE, is congruent to segment CE because that's what midpoint means. Okay, then it also says that E is the midpoint of BD. So here's E again. Now it is the middle of BD. That means that segment BE is congruent to segment ED. Segment BE is congruent to segment DE properly named so they match up. Okay, <clears throat> then we look and we also have, because it's given, right, this statement right here, it is told to us by the markings in the picture <clears throat> that AB is congruent to CD. So there's all three sides. We have all three parts of our sides. Now we need information about our angles. Well, there is nothing marked in the picture about our angles. So let's just start with the parts that we know for sure. Always look for vertical angles. So I know that those two angles are vertical, so I can say that angle AEB is congruent to angle CED because they're vertical angles. Then I need the other pieces. Now, you may not have seen it, or maybe you did. You see these little arrows right here. Well, those little arrows, remember it means that those lines are parallel. And if those lines are parallel, that means that this angle and this angle are congruent to each other. Because if lines are parallel, alternate interior angles are congruent. So angle B is congruent to angle D. In that case, I can just use its nickname <clears throat> because there's only one angle at B. There's only one angle at D. Where there are four angles here at E, that's why I had to use the full name. Then we also have the same thing. For the same reason, we have um, these two lines are parallel, and we have this is my transversal, which tells me that angle A is congruent to angle C. Angle A is congruent to angle C because if lines are parallel, then alternate interior angles are congruent. So that's our situation that we have there. At that point now, I have named all three pairs of congruent sides and all three pairs of congruent angles. Since all six pairs are congruent to another triangle with all the same six pairs, then we can say that yes, these triangles are congruent. Okay, so <clears throat> in the end, our summary is this, that a congruency tells us what our corresponding parts are and which ones are congruent to each other. It helps us to set up what we know so that it can summarize for us which pieces are our congruent corresponding parts.